Let's get this show on the road. Players and trainers, if you're watching this cut <laughs> of the LDL Power Rankings Week 1, um, kind of as Jack and I were going through the Power Rankings, I realized I have muted my mic because my dog started barking and I didn't want the barking to show up in the video. So you guys actually did not get my thought process or my note taking. And actually, a good amount of the video is just... Me being quiet, it's quiet and then Jack talks at random moments, but highly suggest you guys check it out in case you're watching this video. It's only going to be for the Utah Valley Talon Flames, the Rome Empoleons, the Frisky Finney, and uh, the fourth spot, which would is, um, if I'm not mistaken, Waffles. So if you're one of those four players, then you guys can check out this side, but if you want to hear their, what I have notes taken for them, um, I highly suggest you stay Regardless, you should stay. Um, so, first off, we have seventh place, the Utah Valley Times Flame. Um, so, Jack was actually talking a little bit about how Azu was able to to really put in a lot of work there late game. Um, how his opponent really lacked the prep of for the Azu um, back for cut back Kyle. Um, so I kind of just wrote here that typical um, typical Jordan. It's a typical Jordan team. It has uh, super offensive Mons. Um, Nihiligo lead was pretty obvious. I think Backpout could have played that better, but I really don't know how Backpout plays. Um, Hazards were a great bring on both ends of the uh, of, of teams. I think um, for Jordan. It played out smoother because of the fact Jordan was able actually to spin away and erase three hazards in one turn. He was able to get rid of the sticky webs. He was able to get rid of the st uh, stealth rocks and get rid of spikes all in one go. Um, I think it was a great read by Jordan to set up Azu. I think that was a phenomenal set to bring this week. Um, his opponent had nothing for it. Um, the only thing he could have done is have like Thunderball and Starmie or... Uh, Z Psychic or Z probably even Z Future Sight just to get that huge damage off um, or a Z Thunderbolt that would have been really really nice and that could have saved them from the, from the sweep but unfortunately it didn't and um, thanks to I believe him on top Intimidate you know and realizing that Clef Q was a physical variant Jordan was able to take advantage get in Azu and substitute not substitute Belly Drum eat that Citrus Berry and sweep from there on out. So congratulations, Jordan. Nice battle. Really enjoyed it. Really nice. I love seeing his offense. We both we're both offensive players, and that's why I actually I like fighting Jordan. But moving on to spot number four in the Roman Porleons, um, Aaron. Uh, so Aaron, and I mentioned in my video. I called him A Aaron. I gotta stop doing that. That's from those comedians. Uh, so Aaron's um, he faced, if I'm not mistaken. That was Arbelardo? Yeah. Yeah. So, wow, I actually have quite a few notes here. Uh, so, when it came to Aaron's battle, I love the Toxic Spikes. Toxic Spikes were so, so clutch um, for his opponent because his opponent actually lacked a lot of hazard removal. He lacked hazard removal this week. So, that was very smart of him to bring the Toxic Spikes. Uh, on top of that, he made a Pacephalon switch in. Like, it, it's super cool because... He rapid spin when his opponent did not um, switch in the Persephalon. And then when his opponent did switch in the Persephalon, he went for the Scald. It was a doozy, man. It was a nice, nice battle to watch. So, really like that. He made some really crazy reads. Uh, when it was Magnezone, Magnezone um, was, went for Flash Cannon. And he actually stayed in with Tentacruel. Take, he was able to eat that up. Um, Soon as that happened, kind of revealed, hey, this guy's scarfed, and I think he might even out sped, so that was awesome. Um, so he knew that he was locked into Flash Cannon, his opponents had to switch out, do this, do that. Uh, so, like, and he got free Toxic Spikes, free Toxic Spikes. And then when he did bring in the Tentacruel, uh, well, right in the Magnezone again, he clicked the Thunder Ball, but Aaron made the read and went into Dawn Fan. So I thought Aaron was making phenomenal reads, phenomenal reads this battle. So I really, really enjoyed. Um, now, 
his team is bulky. <laughs> his team was super, super bulky. I don't think his opponent was as prepared. Um, now, I do mention that the Scarf Nine Tails was really nice with the freeze dry. The only problem was it didn't have the hail warning, which actually was kind of necessary in the fact that it would have uh, picked up a KO on the the Gyarados without having to cause too much damage, but without a doubt he was able to still pull through. But other than that, like I think Kales could have been nice, especially if you had Blizzard. Like you get the hundred percent accuracy. But he has his reasoning why. But I felt like it was necessary. Um he made a really, really bulky Cresselia this week. Um because Cresselia was able to take a thousand arrows plus a Z to um, Tectonic Continental no Tectonic Rage. Tectonic Rage uh, after getting slammed down to the bottom uh, from a Zygarde 50%. And as soon as he took all that damage, he was able to click that Moonlight, recover all that back. That was super, super awesome. That was really, really smart on his behalf because it kept it very, um, kept it along longer, uh, around longer. While his Zygarde just kind of dwindles down to Toxic, really. So super, super smart by Aaron this week. So this team was super bulky. And on top of super bulky... His opponents were getting toxic uh, well, from the toxic spikes. And I think the washer is being picked up in the back. I'm sorry about that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the only thing I did comment as well was um, I don't know if his opponent here, Arbelardo, was aware that poison types can absorb the toxic spikes. And you have an area dose who is technically a poison type. It's I think it gets overlooked for his poison typing, but it is a poison bug typing uh, so Arbelardo kind of ate away those um, toxic spikes a lot sooner and he didn't you don't see that till the last turn when it actually survives the stealth rocks as well it survives stealth rocks plus thing um, so those are little things you can actually calc in battle and stuff but yep um, caught in guard mega altaria finishing up the game that thing was why do you have to bring Cotton Guard? That's like one of my scary it's one of the sets I'm really really scared of Cotton Guard Mega Altaria with that said uh, let's jump on to spot number five in the Frisky Finis. Uh, Frisky Finis are, that's not Waffles, that's Davin. I really, really enjoyed this team. Uh, I really enjoyed this 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 battle. Uh, really one of my favorites. Um, as uh, Jack mentioned, I think I'm going to start off with that first. Jack mentioned, I don't, he doesn't know what he could have done better except actually the happiness if you don't have happiness i don't know run body slam run run, frustra run frustration man maybe that's better uh you'll get more damage off so just the happiness with with that it's a very tricky area to deal with because um unless you gen your old man's happiness is always going to be uh an issue but let's just switch to this music over here real quick um so yeah and then Zydog crypto crypto picking up four kills okay he doesn't call it crypto okay Zydog picking up four kills man that battle alone that thing would come in click thousand arrows it would come in click outrage that thing was a beast this game I love watching Zydog play um I thought Davin had amazing cleric this week I thought he had really good hazards uh sticky web slowed down his opponent's whole team he was making solid reads solid reads from beginning so 95% of the battle because uh, his opponent, Brandon, did get the last read at the end there. Um, he got the better of the two reads. But without a doubt, man, you know, Davin coming through with Zydog. Um, poof. I, I put down that the questionable play was probably outranged there at the end. I, I, I felt like he could have clicked 1,000 arrows. But he has his reasoning why. Maybe outrage was his only, um, only move there. But that's cool. So, moving on to, yeah, that's all I have to say about Davin, man. Really, really good team. Um, I hope he wins the championship. I said that in the last battle, uh, last video, and I'm saying this one. So, anybody that has a Zydog, I hope for the best. But anyone that has a Zero Aura 2, or Victini. Anyone that has Victini, Zydog, or Zero Aura, I always vote for. And that's because those are really fast, hard-hitting mods, and I like them. All right, so moving on to the top four. So top four, I only have to talk for the Tempe. Yeah, Tempe, Trevenant, um, and I believe I let uh, take off on this one because we really, really enjoyed this battle. Uh, so for Waffles here, 
So when it came to Waffle, he had a very, very good lead uh, with the Star Raptor. Uh, so as soon as Star Raptor came out, Max knew of Scarf and he was very, very scared. So he had to actually, he had to try his best to work around it. But every time his opponent would just click U-turn, so that was awesome. I think a bulky Mew holding the Choppleberry, not Chopple. Colbert. Colbert Berry was amazing. Bring amazing prep on his part. Um, it was able to stay along longer. Get up rocks. Dragon Tail, a Jirachi who set up a combine in its face. So that Jirachi was not having no games today. Uh, I thought Delmai's anchor shot was amazing this week. It, it did over 50% to Dragalgy alone. So that shows like how strong this mon can be. Extremely how strong it can be. Uh, from the battle, we got confirmed that Star Raptor was Scarf because it outsped the Greninja. And last but not least, I thought that he, yeah, it's everything that kind of Jack went over. Uh, Shuka Berry, uh, he tran very, very nice set this week. Um, so, was able to take a hit, kill off any mod that it took the hit from, which I can't remember in this moment. And then. Uh, I love the Sneasel with the knockoff. I'm not a huge Sneasel fan, but this week I loved this Sneasel. So with that, that pressure of knockoff, his opponent was very, very, um, had to be very careful what is swapped in. And then last but not least, Manaphy with the Z move at the end there. What better way to end the game than with a bang? So those are going to be the top missing uh, commentaries of my notes for that. But I hope you guys enjoy the rest of LDL season one of the off season. These power rankings should always. I hope they come forever. Now and forever. With that said, you guys are amazing. Stay blazing. Squid out.